to hold on and they get he missed the, the complete that <laughs> he's crazy he's stuff. Side, is on the grass on the info floor he slices through he tags they hail from around the globe and though separated by oceans they gather in the virtual world for reasons as varied as their locales whether it's a defending champion looking to retain his title a new and eager hopeful driving for recognition, or a legend prepared to recapture past glory. In the end, the one goal they all share is to win. But when naming a victor, only one driver's name can be etched into the record books. You're watching the Hoisingfeld Engineering MX-5 World Tour. After 12 completed seasons, 157 races in total, 111 broadcasted by GSRC, the Hoisingfeld Engineering MX-5 World Tour comes here to Twin Ring Motegi on the island nation of Japan for its Season 13 Double Distance Double Point Grand Finale. And all the season ending action from Green Flag to Victory Donuts can be seen live as it happens here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Konnichiwa everyone and welcome to GSRC's Countdown to Green. Up in the booth to give you our words eye view is yours truly Bill Soup's on, joined once again by Justin Prince. Turning the knobs and pushing the sliders is our director Joe Peak, and Dougie Beard is the camera guru. As cyberspace flows into your place over the next 15 streamy award worthy minutes, GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to appreciate the 40 laps of simulated MX-5 road course racing that will immediately follow. Now the last time the MX-5 World Tour raced at Motegi's GP layout was four seasons ago when the great French sim racer and MWT champion Evan Maillard bested 40 other drivers for the win. So since it's been a while, maybe I should reintroduce my booth partner for this morning's race, Justin Prince, to remind the viewers about this place. Justin, welcome. Thank you very much, Bill, as right now located in beautiful Motegi, Japan, near Motegi, Japan, I should say, is this circuit right here. This was just 86 miles from the Fukushima nuclear disaster, and it led to a boycott attempt for the Moto Grand Prix race that year here due to the disaster of the situation. Now, Twin Marine, of course, gets its name from the facility having two tracks in total. The half mile and a half oval, one of the only super speedway ovals in Japan, and a 4.8 kilometer slash 3 mile 14 turn road course, which you will be seeing today. This is also home to the Honda Collection Hall, a go-kart facility, and a nature park in the forest surrounding Twin Ring. This was built in 1997 by Honda as part of the company's effort to bring the IndyCar series over to Japan. And in that series, Danica Patrick earned her only major racing series win in 2008 on the Oval. Now there are a lot of places to pass here on this circuit for today, including the first and third corners, if you have it timed out properly, as well as the 130 radius corner, the hairpin and victory corner. In a lot of different parts of this track, it's all about timing and proper positioning and shifting. 
One missed time or one missed shift could lead to disaster. And one missed time pass could lead to you punting your opponent into the gravel onto the outside or inside of a turn. There's a lot to, to think about here with Twin Ring Motegi today. We'll have to see how everyone handles it today. Bill? When racing here, I always like to think of this track as laid out like the aisles in a supermarket. You kind of go down the cereal aisle before you get to the end, turn around, come back through the canned food section, fruits and vegetables, then one more time around through the, uh, maybe then through the frozen food section before you start to wander off through the bakery and the deli department. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, what happened last time out in the Penelope race that was at Phillip Island. The racing was relatively clean early on, an 11 car train linked up quickly, including the top two points in the points. It was Errol Numb and Sonny Ketchin. Robert Hartley led his share of laps and newcomer Pavel Herman and Brian Holmes filling up the early top five. The first series incident happened between the front runners came on lap 16 when Herman got into the back of Hartley, spinning Hartley off the track and taking him out of contention for the win. During his doing his early peel late reveal strategy that he's become known for was Errol Numb, but once again his pit crew let him down and Numb had a very slow pit stop. With 13 laps to go, there was an audible sigh from the heard from the two-dimensional crowd when the California kid Eric Garcia was forced to retire, ending his quest to become the second driver ever to complete every lap of an entire MWT season. The Slovene machine, Patrick Fliss, remains the only driver to accomplish that feat. When the pit uh, cycle was finished, slow stop be darned, Num was back out in front ahead of Schwenke and Holmes. With six laps to go, Kenshin, feeling the quest for his third straight championship slipping away, charged to the lead. And with five laps to go, Phillip Island did what Phillip Island always does, give us a great late battle for the win. Watching Num and Ketchin wrestle up front was Schwenke, Herman, and the Italian, Marcelo Pijan. On the white flag lap, not happy just to watch the show, but wanted to take a role on stage was Herman. Unfortunately, he did to Hartley, or what he did to Hartley earlier on in the race, he did again as he punted Sonny Ketchum off the track, also taking out Bajan, leaving only Swanky to race with Numb for the win. But Numb was not to be denied as the Roland Estonian picked up his sixth win of the season. Swanky settled for second, and Herman sheepishly claimed the final podium spot. But the big news was Kanchen relegated to 16th. And all of that action set up today's double points, double distance season finale. So let's look at the points. Now, page 19 in the GSRC Commentator's Handbook says, create drama whenever possible, but try as I might, with a 152-point lead coming into the, fin the finale here, I am forced to confess that the Roland Estonian has indeed clinched the Season 13 Championship, Errol Numb, his first MWT crown. And while I am sad that I could not comply with the GSRC guidelines, I am indeed happy to congratulate Errol for a job well done. Likewise, two-time champion Sonny Ketchin, Catch Me If You Catchin, is looking is locked into second place. Or so I thought, because Patrick Fliss was forced to miss the last part of the season, and we were expecting him to drop down in the standings, but surprise, 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 look who's here back on the men, Patrick Fliss. Not sure if he can go the distance today, as he's still on the men. We're going to talk to him a little later here in the pre-race show. Eric Garcia and Tom Ratchie complete the left side of the graphic. On the right side of the overlay, there's plenty of red and green arrows there. Travis Swenke, David Hampson, both up a spot. Dropping down two spots was the Portuguese driver, Sergio Mora, now in eighth. Brian Holmes holds station in ninth. And making his debut appearance on the top ten graphic, welcome Ashley Beard. Okay, Justin, we've talked about the track. We've reviewed the last race. Gone over the championship. Now, how about we take a second and talk about the race details they are a little different for today's race. Yes, they are a little different for this final round of 12 for the season. As many of you know, there are three no-show compensations for the season calculated by a driver's performance throughout the year. However, to encourage drivers to participate in a special double-point grand finale, no-show compensation will not be awarded for this event. There instead will be something called starting park points that will be offered to drivers who could not race. And we'll, you'll have more details from you in a little bit on. Of course, we have the Mazda MX-5s for today's race. 
the overall fuel is up to 34 percent up four percent than normal races which today means it'll be about one maybe two pit stops if some people do not time out the way they want to of course qualifying is on its own two laps lone qualifying and all races of course are also a predetermined distance today will go 40 laps with the double distance race. No fast repairs, no incident cap, and of course bonus points for qualifying and miles per incident. Now today's weather is dynamic, of course. At 77 degrees Fahrenheit, the track is 87 degrees, while the relative humidity is 85%. Now a couple additional things to note. Of course, the pit entry is a dangerous pit entry that some drivers may accidentally cut through it was decided earlier this morning that there will be a five second penalty for cutting the pit entry added to people's final times if they cut through the grass entering the pit entry. So they will be not allowed to cut through the grass. There's also been for Herman, he has also had a four point penalty and must do a stop and go if he participates in this final race. Bill? Yeah, Herman, picking those up, we talked about it when I was doing the recap of the race last time out that we saw at Phillip Island where he Herman not only got into the back of Canchin there on the white flag lap but if we talked about it, he also got into the back of of uh, Robert Hartley as well ending his race um hey we have news here wall of famer Giancarlo Lenzi has made it into this one we haven't seen Giancarlo race since well my goodness I think uh I think Clinton was in office in the White House at the time so it's good to see Giancarlo back in there wall of famer not only for uh his participation early on in this season when it was in its infancy but also for his work in getting GSRC uh, one of the founding menders for GSRC and establishing that as what we believe one of the premier broadcasting companies here on the iRacing service we wish Giancarlo all the best a small field which is usually the case here late in the season when the championships get uh, decided people start to slack off a little bit but we do have a nice field looks like about 20 drivers out there right now for our 90 minute race today drivers putting in their qualifying right now our interview is going to be patrick fliss and we want to see if he has yet he's putting in his qualifying times right now so we don't want to interrupt him let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this track and it's a morning race today so the weather should be pretty good passing zones we like it into one and three and Patrick Fliss is actually stopping right now. Let's see, is he, maybe he's not putting in a qualifying time. We're gonna watch he it. Did he oh, put, he's, he did ahead. put in a time. He is seventh overall on the board at the moment. He had an incident point on his first lap and the second lap has come in as he comes right in. Bill? Let's go ahead and talk to Patrick. Remember, this is, interview is brought to you thanks to the guys at Six Sideways. Patrick, I hope, are you able to talk? Did you get everything done out of the way? Yep. Not Okay. Well, first of all, before we talk about the race and stuff, tell us, I, we didn't expect to see you back. I know you're still not 100% back. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Uh, I got uh, permission by doctor to uh, to race, but uh, if it starts hurting, I have to stop. So this is quite a long race, and we'll see how it goes. Well, look, if you're comfortable and you're not able to finish, we'd love you. You're welcome to come in and sit with us in the booth and uh, you're always entertaining to have around, so so if the back is feeling not like you can't do the pedals, but you're able to sit there and enjoy, feel welcome to come on in. Uh, Justin, you got a question for Patrick? Yes, right now you had a pretty good qualifying time, seventh overall on the grid with a 2.13.29.8. Um, basically, how do you hope to see your car handled today with today's temperatures? The track currently, of course, 87 degrees Fahrenheit, but it could go up during the race, in fact. The weather has gone up one degree since we started talking. How do you plan to handle your car today with today's conditions? Yeah, actually, I got an off track on my first lap, which was uh, three tenths better. But um, yeah, the weather is pretty good. Uh, it's morning, so it's a bit colder. I mean, it's not that hot. And um, yeah, I should be fine. I'm just going to play it safe, I think, and uh, try to try to finish, I hope. But we'll see how it goes. All right, Patrick. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Stay healthy. And, uh, man, you've made my day. I don't care how you finish. I'm just, uh, we grown fond of you. You're always you're a good guy. Glad to see you back on the mend. Thank you so much, Bill. That means a lot. Um, I'd just like to thank also uh, my brace for supporting me. 
<laughs> He's always good for one. Let's get him out of here. I'm tired of him already. And, of course, that interview was brought to you by the guys at Six Sideways. They're a full-service motorsports company based in Sebring, Florida, which currently competes in the Take a Breath SCCA Pro Racing Battery Tender Mazda MX-5 Cup Championship. they got to get a better name for that series. Contact them with your motor racing needs at SixSideways.com. Six Sideways. Measure your life in milliseconds. Qualifying is done. Let's go ahead and run through the field as it is a standing start. Although it's kind of small, we can probably take our time a little bit here. On the front row, let's do it a row at a time here. Justin, on the front row, it's the the, the new champion, Aero Num, inside of Travis Swenke. Justin? And in row two, Marcelo Pegnin will start alongside Tom Rapshi. Rapshi with a nice 2.12 lap time. Ratchy making his 110 start today, second on the all-time list. Bob Van Ratwig in the fifth position. Yasuda Shiraiwa in the sixth spot. Patrick Fliss returning from injury for his first start in a while. He'll start off in seventh position. Jordy Fike will start alongside him in row four. Row five made up of Boss Slob and Billy Bob Wright. And in row six, uh, it is currently the California kid, Eric Garcia, alongside Benjamin Nelson. Joe McDonald had a spot, and it was the Baker's Dozen, E-I-E-I-O, Trip Smith in the 14th. Jerome Ursum in his Barbie car starts off 15th, while in 16th, it'll be Dries Nice in row eight. Rounding out the last three drivers, David Hampson not able to put in a qualifying time. Giancarlo, a Wall of Famer, welcome back to the series. We'll see if he can get to the end of these 90 minutes, sitting in 18th. And the last car on the grid, Patrick Post. He posted no qualifying time. There you have it, a field of 19. They are gathering up right now under the Japanese morning sun on the pole. Well, it's no surprising to see Errol Num. He gets championships in most every series he races in, and he picks up his first one here. Season number 13 joins some big names, the likes of Jan Kumans, three-time champion, Richard Eklund, the two-time champion from the U.S., and, of course, Sonny Ketchin, two-time champion, and Num denies Ketchin a chance for his third in a row. A lot of history in the MX-5, but right now we're focused on the present. As the lights are up, the engines begin to harmonize, for the final time this season, gather up the chickens to cover behind the cask as the horses are out of the barn and the rolling Estonian leads the stampede into the first corner, the right-hander, and he negotiates that well. Dropping into second is Swanky. Marcella Pajan in third, the driver from Italy. Newcomer Bob Van Catwick in fourth. Rounding out your top five, it's the base state hammer, Tom Ratchie. And everyone filing into single file already coming into the third quarter. Or as there was a bunch of cars too wide, of course, going through the turn. A couple of cones already falling be around the course right behind them. But a nice clean start as Fliss already looking to make his first move on Rapshi. They negotiate three and four well. Now they come into the right-hander of five. Another passing zone, but everyone behaves right now for the most part. They know they got nine minutes to go. Now they go beneath the underpass and head their way down to six. This sweeping corner, they call it 130R on my lap chart. I've never played that before. I don't like that name. 130R reminds me of a, well, a, yeah, Suzuka. So I'm going to pass on that one because people are going to think we're in the wrong part of Japan. Right now, numb. Oh, I hear a little bit of contact back there. Yes. Could have been Joe McDonald. And I believe it was, he just ran off the course. He smacked hard into the wall, and he's going to have to go into the pit lane. This looks like either a driver falling asleep at the wheel or hardware malfunction. He looks like he's going straight. We'll stay with us for a while, and then all of a sudden as he comes around here, this is that, that right-hander we talked about. Everything looks fine, Justin, and then, where's he going? Yeah, it just looked like... Uh... He just went off the track and just drove into the wall. Something's got to tell me. I'm, a, I'm going to assume that he had a good night's sleep. He would, it'd be hard to fall asleep on the first lap, so let's call that one a hardware aerial. Meanwhile, up in front now, as we still have 18 cars out on the lead lap, Aero Num, as he goes under beneath the oval one more time, coming through the, what is called here, 12, 13, and 14. The final corner, heading back down, completing lap number one. Let's give it to the Roland Estonian. Swanky happy in second. Bajan in third. Catwick in fourth. Tom Ratchie in fifth with visions of maybe getting inside of Catwick. 
Ratchet kind of ducks in there into one. Thinks better of it, backs off a little bit. Let's round out the less of your top ten. Patrick Fliss has worked his way up a spot into sixth. Shira Iwa in seventh. Slob, Wright, and the Sheriff, Jordy Fight, running into the top ten. And we got an update with Joe McDonald. He had a connection issue, it seems, on top of the hardware issue. He is back into the race session, but some very bad luck there for McDonald could cost him any chance of this race. As they run, as they run single file, we're going to look here as Patrick Fliss trying to see if he can get around the base eight hammer. The best battle right in here about third, fourth, fifth back. Ratchy now has fallen a little bit off of Catwick. Maybe racing a little bit out of his mirror right now. He's got Patrick Fliss. Tom, a veteran of the series, I'm sure he's glad to see Patrick back in. Maybe not hounding him, though, like he is. Yeah, Fliss has been trying to cause that pressure for a couple laps now, right from the start. So he's just got to be a little patient. And I he'll eventually get that move, I think, though, based on how fast he's been going in some of the straightaways. Another driver in his freshman campaign is Yasuta Shiraiwa back there, being hounded right now by Boss Slob. Look up front, though. Here we go. Now, this is Fliss is kind of feeling out Ratchy. Took a wide line in. Look at this. He took a wide line in. Ratchy took kind of defensive line. Now down this long straight, heading into 11. Fliss tries to tuck in, get a little bit of a draft, gets to the inside, and Justin, I think he's in the perfection. Let's see if Patrick can finish off the pass. Pretty sure he's in the perfect position to yeah. do that, and he is. He gets the, the pass, forces uh, Rapshi to go on the outside, and now has the position. Some good timing there from him, that's for sure. That is some good race crap. Ratchy not giving up the ghost right now, staying on the back of Fliss. Shira Iwa right behind him, looking for a way around. Shira Iwa picked up a bit of a bad reputation early. A little bit of aggressive driver. I think he's toned down a little bit. Ratchy trying to peek on in the inside. This battle for fifth continues to be the best battle on the track. Up front, it is still Numb, Swanky, Pajan, and Catwig. Look there at the Bay State Hammer. Another Wall of Famer. On, first of all, for just the amount of time he's put in. We talked about it, 110 entered races. 110 events entered, 25 top fives, but still winless. You gotta think he's gonna get a win eventually, yeah, though. Yeah, eventually. Who knows, maybe it can come on today here in the final race of the season, but, but you know, it's still a long way. It's still, of course, 38 to go. Looking at this battle, this continue. We'll stay on this a little bit while longer here. This is the battle Fliss not able to get away from Ratchy. Shira Iwa and Slob in there. It was this point of the season last season, season 12, when a streak was broken. Held by Jeroen Ursum. he held the record for most starts without a top 10. He was able to pick that one up last time, and everyone was happy to see that. Jeroen right now looking to get his second top 10, racing in 13th position. Let's drop back a little bit. We can look at some of the drivers back there. Nice little battle. We talked about Giancarlo Lenzi. Lenzi actually has some career wins, but he, he always clarifies that he, that he picked it up before the series really got his legs and the, the depth of talent was not quite as steep, but he has three or four wins under his belt, being chased by Patrick Post and Trip Smith. They're running pretty well, but also when you look at some of their lap times, they are a bit off the pace speed-wise. Those cars that you're seeing on your screen by about two or three seconds at the moment, so they got to find a way to get some more speed. The MWT traditionally does a 45-minute race with one stop, but what has come into effect the last few seasons that they put in the double points, double distance grand finale that we have here now. Now, there are no drop race insurance. We talked about it earlier as we look at the battle going on there between Rachi and Shira Iwa. Making a move on the inside, that's Shira Iwa now. 
He's going to be, this is going to be on the outside as they come up to the left hander. It's going to be hard for the Japanese driver to get this. He can try to pin Ratchy down there, but no, he goes a little bit wide and now he's going to lose a lot of momentum. Didn't get the drive out of three that he was hoping for. Well, out of four, the three, four complex there. And that gives the seventh place position to Boss Slav. So move Slav up one spot. Shiriwa back to eighth. Still plenty of racing left. Still plenty of racing and plenty of time to try and make a similar move once again because Shirima did have a decent line heading into that corner and we and I had seen drivers do that in practice testing some things out with similar speed cars on the outside but like you said it's about pinning the driver down and as well you hitting the corner correctly on the outside unfortunately he just seemed to hit the grass a little bit on that corner, but now they're just focusing on single file for the time being, while the top four leaders start to get close to battling themselves. Yeah, let's go up front for a second, because I thought Arrow might be able to pull away, but no. They call him Dory, Travis Schwenke we're talking about, because he has the, he just, the, just keep swimming, the Dory philosophy there. Just keep driving and putting in the laps. Right now racing in second and following Arrow Numb. Remember, Schwenke was involved in the in the battle for the win with Numb at Phillip Island. There was a five-car train that got kind of thinned out on the last lap when uh, Pavel Herman got into the back of, of uh, Sonny Kachin and also took off Marcella Pajan, leaving only Numb and Schwenke to battle out. Schwenke did everything he could to get around the Roland Estonian, but was not able to pick up the win. And right now... It's a little bit of deja vu here as we're seeing Numb, Schwenke, and Pajan again in the battle. Falling off a little bit is uh, the newcomer Bob Van Katwick back there in fourth. And let's go back a little bit because it looks like we got a position change. A slob uh, lost the position to Shirwa Shirka Shirwala. Let's go back and look at the replay there. <laughs> Yes, I have a hard time pronouncing his name for some reason. You have my permission to call him Shooter for the rest of the race, okay? That's, I'll go with Shira Iwa. Man, I have been there, though, so I, I feel for you, buddy. And we have the move right here. Watch the Japanese driver, Yasua, Yasuta Shira Iwa, making the move on Boss Slob. And there you go. My goodness, and look at Slob trying to make it back as they go beneath the shadows there of the overpass. Some good racing going on. Yeah, some good racing all throughout. Uh, right now, if you look at Fliss and Rashi, that battle is starting to get close right now. Rashi's just trying to time it out now, too, if you look at that. Yeah, Ratchy's a sharp cookie. Again, I use sharp cookie. That is really not a, not a phrase. I will work on that one. He knows enough to follow Patrick. Patrick usually pretty fast, of course. Ratchy also realizes that Patrick is on the men, maybe not racing at 100% right now. But they are beginning to distance themselves away from the Shira Iwa slob battle. That interval about 1.2 seconds. Let's drop back. We haven't talked about this battle for ninth. How about Billy Bob Wright racing here with Jordy Fike? Boy, here's a couple of veterans. These are a couple guys you would like to go out and have some type of adult beverage with. Billy Bob Wright picked up his very first victory on a GSRC broadcasted event in the Lotus 49 event. Looking here, let's Tom Ratchie just got into the little bit of love tap to Patrick Fliss. As we look at, look at Billy Bob Wright goes a little bit off track. Billy Bob weaving back and forth like a loom trying to hold off the Sheriff of Jordy Fike. I think Fike, as long as he stays behind him, gets the draft, will be able to make the pass the next couple laps because it looks like Billy Bob Wright is losing a bit of himself, but it looks like Wright had a better... In fact, Wright had a not as good turn in, I should say, yep. into the first corner as Fike now in position to make a possible pass. Bike out there in his Phoenix racing machine. You can see the wings on the hood there. Just beneath the top of the windshield. Trying to get around. Watching the whole thing happen back in 11th is the California kid, Eric Garcia. Whose quest for the perfect Ironman season came to a stop last time at Phillip Island. 
I can report that the Eagle Nest Tavern has agreed to come back to sponsor the Eagle Nest Cavern back marker review. Looking at Ratchy making a move. And this, this is... is that's Shira Ewa gets around. Ratchy now has fallen back. Something must have happened to Tom. I think he ran into Shira, Shiriawa right there, in fact. I, you could hear a slight bit of the crunch as he bumped into the back bumper and lost the position to Slob on top of that. Yeah, what was happening, though, Shira, uh, uh, Ratchy was in the battle with Fliss. He had been following Fliss. Let's see if I can find out why Tom dropped back. Have you made a mistake? Maybe got a slowdown penalty somewhere? I uh, know, I just think... Uh, you know what? It was after the little love tap that he got on... Uh, on Fliss, he kind of lost his momentum and has now fallen back. A little bit of bad luck. As so long as he works his way back up, I think he'll be okay. Just, just got to make sure you uh, don't uh, bump somebody into a corner. We got to go up front because Num now is not having an easy time of it as Travis Swanky is doing everything he can. He would like to get around the roll in Estonia. I think what one of the posts that Schwenke made after the Phillip Island event was he said, I knew that that Num and Catchin were in the points championship battle. I did not want to be a part of having an effect on that championship, so he raced extra specially careful. I think now that he knows that Aero Num has this thing clinched, I think we can see Travis race with a little more reckless abandon and see if he can get that lead. They continue to race in the same order that they have. We can note, though, that Rob Van Catwick, who had fallen off, is now back in the hunt as that four-car train continues up there. It is a, just a long way back, though, to Fliss, about five seconds. Yeah, that train is just rolling and rolling and rolling, working together. But I feel like this lead is going to change hands pretty soon because looking at the speeds of Norman Schwenke, Schwenke is accelerating faster on all the straightaways than Numb right now. Num's just keeping that lead now based on how he's been approaching the turns. Because when you look at it, Swanky's entering these turns as much as 3, 4, 5 miles per hour faster. We're into these turns. Num's just getting it based on pure braking points and timing right now, right now to keep that lead. Now remember, fuel does play a factor here. We are assuming it has always been the case that there were two stops. We talked to some of the uh, drivers in here and they said they upped the gas to 34% compared to 30. If it was the traditional 30% fuel size for the for the tank, I would certainly say we're looking at two stops today. 34%? Maybe somebody can save fuel. Maybe there's something going on out here that I don't know about. And maybe that's what uh, Travis Swanky might want to stay back there. Michelle Pajan, see if he can one-stop it. Possibly. I that's probably a good strategy to try and stretch it to one stop because you might lose some extra time if you try and do the two stop strategy. Who knows? We'll have to see what drivers decide as the race continues to go on and the action continues to heat up. Let's leave that battle for a second. Go back to ninth position. This is the Billy Bob Wright battle that has continued with Jordy Fike. But was once a two car dance is now... A partie de trois, I like to say, as Eric Garcia has joined the party. And I think the party's getting a bit hectic as Billy Bob Wright took the victory corner wide on the exit and through the grass. Somehow he is just keeping ninth position despite running wide on a few of these corners already. So right now I think he's he might be a bit lucky, luckier than he thinks right now with Fike and Garcia right behind him. Billy Bob Wright, a veteran of many, 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 many MWT events. And of course, I talked about it. We covered him in the Lotus 40. Oh, Billy Bob is loose. Keep it. Hang on to it, Billy. He's got it. He's going to go off into the sand. He's going to lose those spots to Jordy Fight and Eric Garcia, but he keeps it off the wall. The MX-5s are pretty good when they get off of the sand. I don't think he picked up any damage. Just to finish my thought about Billy Bob as we go back now to Travis Swanky in second position. He did not have a team speak set up that he did not know how to do a driver interview. We had to get that set up for him. But he was able to come in and talk to us. Look at this four car train up in front. Numb, Swanky, Jean, and Catwick. 
I think if Schwenke gets the right moment, he might be able to dive bomb or sneak his corner underneath Numb, and he's going to do that. But look at the momentum that Numb's going to get on the top side. He gets the drive off. My goodness, Schwenke tucks back in behind. Pajan, Pajan, a very good driver. I think Swanky knows them too, can trust, these guys can trust each other. The unknown factor in here, at least as far as I'm concerned, is Bob Van Katwick. Katwick racing out of the Bella Lux Club. If I remember right, that is Belgium, Luxembourg, and, Luxembourg, and the other country would be uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. I'm just going to make the assumption my mom told me never to make assume stuff or stereotype, but I think with the Van Catwick, I'm going to assume that he's a Netherlands driver, a Dutch driver. Yes, right now Van Catwick has been running very well for, for a newcomer for this series, keeping up with the top contenders, just watching them battle it out right now. So it's just been a very impressive run from him. Consistent turns, consistent braking points. I think he he's just in a great position right now for a driver like him right now. If you look at some of the times, it's even faster than a couple of the cars ahead of him. Four cars up in front there. The Num, Swanky, Pajan, and Catwood. We ride on board with the Dutch driver right now. Looking ahead of the three drivers. Then there's a man in what I call the Thor Heyerdahl position, kind of floating in an ocean all by himself, and that is Patrick Fliss racing in fifth. Before you get back to another train of cars, Shira Iwa, Slob, and Ratchi. Something tells me when Ratchi got into the back of uh, Fliss that maybe that car picked up some damage. All of a sudden, he's way in the back now, might be down on straight line speed. Yeah, looking at Rafshi, he does have damage on the left front as well as the uh, main front of the nose from that collision. It looks like a fair amount of damage, and I think it is going to definitely affect him because it does look like it's knocked the aerodynamics a bit off the car when you look at it uh, from the rear chase camera. And right now, if you're Fliss too, I think you're thinking, I'm lucky to not be back there because it's a little hectic. You've seen guys like Slob go into oh, the grass in the last couple of the lead. Here's Swanky on the inside now. I think he's got a shot at it. Now they get Numb gets a wide ride out as they go under the beneath the underpass again and Numb is able to fend him off one more time. Travis doing everything he can. He gets alongside of Numb but he just cannot close the deal. I'm surprised he hasn't been able to do it yet because Swanky does have the better straightaway speed. It's just Numb has the better turning ability and speed right now that he wants to have to stay in front of the cars that are in front behind him even though some of them are running faster than him going into these turns but at the same time you think about it some people say it's better to go slower into these turns back at the corner and have a better acceleration and that's what I think Numb has been doing to keep this lead I think back there reminding me of a kid waiting his turn to play a video game as Marcelo Pajan. He's saying to Travis, come on, you've been on the, <laughs> you've had the controller for too long. Let me take a shot at uh, Numb and see if I can get it done. Swanky saying, nope, wait your turn. I think I can do this. And we have some more information, meanwhile, involving Van Catwick, who is one of, of course, one of the newcomers for today's race. He is from the Netherlands and is a, as Described by Yep Williamson, he is supposed is a clean driver, part of the GLT community, and has been part of an endurance team with the HPD and the GT3 NES. So he was he came from the basically the same cloth as Bass Boss Lob as well cool. as a couple of our drivers. And an amateur juggler working on the six ball juggle, currently able to fly. One of only twelve Dutch. Uh, jugglers who are able to do a six ball juggle so we wish him the best of luck with that I'd like to know where you found that That's so. I have my inside sources on that one let's drop back to fifth position because I use the word drop and that's what's happened at Patrick Fliss not sure if he's maybe beginning to tire out or if uh, just the Yasuta Shirayua has a good pace but he's beginning to run him down now he's going to turn into another four car train
contact. Yep. It was Post. Is that who I'm seeing? Patrick Post? No. Yes, Patrick Post just nosed it into the corner and put it in the wall. Brings it back out. I guess the car is still on track. There you see it right there. It is still on track, but my goodness, what I think we need to see a little bit earlier if we can because let's take a look. He had a consistent turn and was doing okay. Turned a little bit harder than I think I would. He hit the rumble strips and just lost control, yeah. So it was so he was out in the grass as well. All right, looks like things are settling down with the top four. Maybe we can go back and look at some of the guys we haven't talked much about. Let's drop back to that ninth position battle again. This is Jordy Fike. Garcia is now in there. Remember Billy Bob Wright took his little vacation to the beach? Well, he packed up his umbrella and all his plastic shovel and his plastic bucket. He's back in the hunt now. This is a three-car battle. Jordy Fike, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Decent little battle back here. Garcia slowly working his way through the field. Garcia, of course, qualified 11th. And right now has a chance to already move up to 9th as Fike seems to be losing ground on Garcia with each passing corner. About just a three tenths of a second back is Garcia. Going up to as high as now half a second, but Garcia is able to close it on exit each time right now. Except for that corner, of course, because he just dropped a six-tenth back by taking it a little too wide. We are a quarter of the way through the race, working lap number 30, or lap 10 of, uh, well, actually on lap 11 now of the scheduled 40, 30 to go. Yeah, it's just been a very interesting and entertaining race, I think, especially that action in the top four, or... And it looks like the Jeroen Ursum in the pink car there. Yes, yeah, something happened with Ursum. We'll see what happened in his Barbie car. As you can see, hit the grass and I think just lost a bit of his handling there and lost a few spots because of that. Gives the spot to we call him GL Giancarlo Lenzi. He moves up to 14th. And is that going to make, oh, that's going to put Trip Smith and Jeroen Ursum next to each other on the track. They put on a good show a few races back as they were battling for the last place on the lead lap. With a small field, we'll have time to check in on them. We can report that Dries Nice never took the grid, nor did David Hampson. 17 cars actually raced her today. Joe McDonald is out. Trip Smith currently racing back there with Jeroen Ursum, 16 cars on the lead lap. So a few car drivers of course had some bad luck. Joe McDonald did have the hardware issue he confirmed after coming back from that situation where he had the received throughput fell to an unacceptable level which is basically a connection issue in our hardware. So um, bad luck for him I think. He was running very well in practice running around the range of where Billy Bob Wright are and Benjamin Nelson. So, some bad luck for a couple drivers, but right now, with this battle up front, it's just, I think a few drivers might be thinking, when do I have to pit soon? Because, of course, yes, it has a 34% fuel cap, but that's the fuel window starting to creep slowly into play here. We talked about the history of this series. This is the 158th race on the 13 seasons in the MWT. Several sponsors, there was Blondie's, the Green Valley Lake, of course, Tidal Influence, a longtime sponsor, and now Poisingfeld Engineering, good to have them on board. Justin, I have a stat for you. Add up all the miles ever raced by all the drivers in this series. And it's 95% of the way to the moon. 232,000 miles put in by drivers over the course of the history of the MX-5 World Tour. Holy my goodness, that's the best only thing I can react to that because part of me is thinking the MWT can 
may have their own trip to the moon if they wanted yeah, to by yeah. next season. I think they might actually try that. Of course, that would be the virtual moon. And of course, the virtual moon coming in the next build of iRacing. Yeah, that would be interesting. Space shuttle races. Um, I that that's all I'm gonna say. Well, I've talked about it before. I, I've, I've I've recommended to some youngsters to go on virtual dates and get your girlfriend a, a subscription to iRacing. To go out to Bathurst. Get up there at the top of the mountain. There overlooks that view. Yeah, kind of like, romantic. Yeah. Yeah, but let's look at this fifth position battle. Fliss and Shir Shiriawa is back up close once again. That is Shiriawa. Yes, it is. He actually does make the pass on Fliss this time. And look at this. So Fliss now has has fallen back. Let's give you a let's see what Shiriawa can do. Anything here with Catwick. That interval now just under seven seconds. The front four drivers, and then the next four drivers. Two, two long ropes of cars there. Yeah, and it's still about seven seconds back, though. If you look at the intervals, they might be able to close it up slowly but surely, because it's going down slowly as the laps go on. But some great action in both of these four-car tandems right now. You know, especially with Flish and Fliss and Shiriawa right now going back and forth for their positioning. Oh, we have our first biter for a pit stop. Coming in with 28 laps to go, it is the Italian driver Marcello Pigeon. Now, he's got to be careful. I don't think traffic's going to be a big factor for him, but he's got to worry that maybe I don't have the pace to run with these guys. Look at the qualifying time. He was two tenths of a second slower than the pole sitter, Aero Num, who's leading that front train. We'll see how the pit stop comes. It's about right now going through the pits. And right now a decent time, about 10 seconds at least, 11.2, up to as high as 13.4 seconds. And it looks like he might have gotten a penalty because he's already up to the 17.8 second mark as well behind well, him is Tom Rapshi. He's taking four tires. Thank you for noticing that there. That's something that I wouldn't expect. A lot of times if there is a two stops and they want to take four tires, they'll do them in two well, first time and two the second time. Now looking at Fliss, he's shooter tried to get around and Fliss is now back out in fourth position. Boss Slob. Now that's become a three-car battle. Remember, there was a fourth car in there, but we documented that uh, the Bay State Hammer Tom Ratchy has pulled off. He's come into the pits. Let's go and see how Pajon has cycled out into eleventh, and he is about two and a half seconds ahead of Ratchy. Well, you know, that's quite a difference. Remember. Marcella was in that lead train that was about seven seconds ahead of the second train. So Tom is able to pick up five seconds on that stop. And you can see it just on the pit stop time. It was right there. Tom was about five seconds faster. Six seconds, but yeah, that is yeah. pretty significant. Well, that's the difference. That's why he's closer. I think the longer stop from Jean was because of the tires. I think so too, because taking four tires, I'm a little surprised actually he decided to take four tires. Maybe he forgot to switch those off. Uh, you don't know. It might be part of the strategy to just take fuel on a second stop if he goes for a two stop strategy. Well, if he's worried about trying to stay with Errol Numb, maybe that's what he thinks I'll come in and I'll be surprised if these guys do it. Uh, if they do four tire stops up here, so I think that's going to cost them. Of course, it could be a benefactor, uh, help them later, or beneficial as the race goes on. 26 laps to go. If we can go another six, we'll get to the halfway mark, and our questions about one stopping it will be answered. I can't imagine that anyone's going to be able to one stop it. It would make no sense that Marcelo would come in if that were the case, so. Yeah, right now no one came around that time around, so they were the first two to try that kind of strategy. See how it plays out, because of course it was just lap 13. This is a 40-lap race. 
So still a long way to go, even with this early pit stop when you think about it. Well, right now, three is the number as we have three three-car trains, Num, Swinky, and Catwick racing together, Fliss, Shira, Iwa, and Slob in a battle, and then Fike, Garcia, and Billy Bob Wright racing together. And it looks like Benjamin Nelson came in, and the he's Alabama, in and out. Yeah, the Alabama driver. We haven't had a chance to talk about him. He was racing all by himself, had no friends out there. Yeah, Long he... Long-time veteran. He is currently last on the cars currently running. He had a 23-5 pit stop, so fairly long pit stop, but he might have went with a similar strategy to what Marcel Pagnon decided to do. And that does not look good. Tom Rapshi went around, and let's look at the replay, Bill. Yeah, I'm not sure if he hit anything. Let's walk. He did a... 360, maybe even a 720 does a three. No, he doesn't come all the way around. Oh, he just. I think he saw. I think he saw a, a, a Pokemon that he had to go in and get there on that. Um. Just, don't okay. You think? He just kind of went off and had to saw one, picked it up real quick, and went back out there. I guess, but we have some pit stops right now from the front group. Arrow Numbs in. All three top cars are factor it in right now. Num, a veteran, knows how to get this done. Schwenke, a veteran, knows how to get this done. Bob Van Catwick, I have no clue how many stops he's made in his career. Let's see what happens for tire-wise. I don't see Num going up right now. We'll keep an eye on that. I don't see Schwenke going up or down. Waiting. So far, the cars seem to be planted. It looks like... Uh... Most of them are looking to do at least something strategy-wise, and it looks like out they come. I think all of them took tires, possibly, as let's look four from all okay. of them, in fact, as Num had one of the faster times, 24-9, 24-7 for Swanky right behind him, while Bob Van Catwick got a 25-1, so all three drivers went with four tires. Good call from our director. I could not see it going up on the... So let's see what happens. Now look at this. This is Cat Week. Remember Pajan made that early stop? Well, here he is. He's going to be right in the mix. Everyone took tires. So Pajan, they all basically in the hunt. Numb with about a 1.2 second lead on Swinky. Numb has been complaining about slow stops over the last couple races. Got a good one there. Couple pit stops going on as that's going on. Meanwhile, as Trip Smith, Jerome Ursum, and Giancarlo Lenzi all in as well into the pits, and all of them also taking tires as well with their stops. So we're going to have to see how they lay out. It looks like all of them will get four tires. Meanwhile, out in front, welcome back to the MWT, Patrick Fliss. Patrick, if you need to race again. Give GSRC a call. We'll see if we can give you some type of doctor's note on that. We do have the doctor of pit topology on staff here. Amjad Yaman, he might be able to help you out. But right now, Patrick out in front. But I don't think it's going to be for long as he negotiates 12, 13, and 14. Look for them to be coming in. And thanks for not making the commentator look wrong. He comes in, followed by Boss Slaw. That's everybody except Garcia. Is Garcia our new leader now? Nope, Garcia coming in right now. And Garcia looks oh. like he cut the corner a little bit. Yeah. That might be a five-second penalty. We'll have to see at the end of the race what they decide. Because they do add the five-second penalty at the end of the overall race time for what drivers have if they were to cut the corner like that. Ah, but Eric is a nice guy. They wouldn't... Uh... <laughs> Maybe he can try to pay that back right now before he comes out. That was questionable. Yeah. And it looks like they can pay it back based on my understanding from our director, Joe Peak. Thank you very much for the explanation. I think he might take that right now rather than waiting for the end of the race to have that time. So with all the stops done, let's go ahead and a small field. Let's go ahead and run through all the cars that are continuing to race out there right now. Your leader, 
by just over a second. It's Errol Numb, Travis Swecky running in second position. It's about another two seconds back before we get to Pajon. And then the Dutch driver, Bob Catwick. Back a little bit farther back, almost 10 seconds back, we get to Fliss and Slob in fifth and sixth. About another four seconds back to Shiraiwa and the Bay State Hammer, Tom Ratchie. Then we got a long ways, about 16 seconds to get back to Jordy Fike and Billy Bob Wright. Eric Garcia racing in 11th. Not with those guys. In fact, he's about 4.2 seconds behind Wright. Let's assume that's because he paid his penalty. So, did a little self-serve penalty there. Running in 11th. About a second and a half ahead of Benjamin Nelson in 12th. Benjamin racing in the Planet Express car, and that is from the cartoon Futurama. That's right. Hey, and here's the battle continues. Ursum and Lindsay in a battle. And Lindsay got the better line, and he got the pass on the outside on the left side. So that's going to be now Lindsay in 13th. Ursum will fall to 14th. Lindsay up there in that orange fanatic machine. Room back there in the pink car. If you're colorblind, like I am, let me help you out. The orange and the pink car are right next to each other. Patrick Post racing in 15th spot. Trying to stay on the lead lap. He's a minute and 23 behind the leader's lap times are about a two minutes and 12, so he's pretty comfortable there. It's Trip Smith out there in his familiar number 28 machine. And you. did Joe McDonald come back out? No, Joe has called today. So 16 drivers still racing all on the lead lap. Justin? Yeah, right now, if you're Trip Smith, uh, he is way off the pace, it seems, because even with Patrick Post, Patrick Post is going into these corners fairly fast, but Trip Smith just way way far back he had the one of the slowest qualifying times and is just not getting the speed he needs to right now in the back but some good racing overall throughout the field back up to 13th and 14th in fact we'll go to the barbie car and jerome ursum and lindsey as they go to wine in the first corner giancarlo lindsey made a rate request say hey can i race in this one and and the answer came back, well, GL, if you're still a member of the of the series, we think you can. He checked it, and they still was. They never took his name off the roster. Look at this as Ursum gets the spot back. So GL shows up. Good to see him out there. He is a series winner. We talked about it earlier. That was back before the talent pool was not quite as deep as it is right now. Good to see GL back. Founding founding father of GSRC and he gets right on the back of Ursum and it really checked up so he didn't get into the back of the series manager probably a smart idea you know uh, yep. especially since your first race in a while you don't want to hit the manager of the series um, I jokingly say but some good racing from them overall good to see GL back out racing Take a look at this battle, though, for for sixth position. Boss Slob and Patrick Fliss have been battling just about the entire time since the pit stops. Fliss getting to the back bumper almost of Slob. So these two are just fighting tooth and nail, running the lines perfectly. Right now, Fliss is just trying to pressure Slob into making a mistake by getting close to his back bumper through every corner right now, if you're seeing that right now. I love this shot because you can see the you can see the brake lights come on a Slav's car. You really see when he gets on the brakes. Which you would think is helpful, and for me it is helpful uh, when I'm following somebody close. I, I, I like to see the tail lights come on. Probably something I shouldn't be paying attention to. I'd like to talk, maybe if we can have one of the top tier drivers come in and see if that's something they pay attention to. 
Well, I think it's uh, something they probably do just in case someone breaks early, for example, and so you don't run to the back of somebody, but also to help strategize where you will be breaking because Fliss has been breaking later than Slob through these corners. And as so well, the break marker is also a better thing to also focus on. Yep. Thing. See, that's why I don't go fast. Cause I focus on the car right in front of me. And often, when he has a spin, I, just, I like to have one also, just so that he doesn't feel... I could have kept the car on the track, but I didn't want to feel bad, so sometimes I spin just in sympathy. <laughs> so I, I'm glad that uh, I'm not the only one who has had stuff like that happen. <laughs> we heard some comments. You can always use the car in front as the brake, and that's that's I've done that too. Let's let's move up to third position here. This is Bajan and Catwig. What was once Justin, where we had four car trains, a couple two four car trains is now broken up into just kind of little duets out there. Everybody racing in sets of two right now. Numb and Schwenke together. Bajan and Catwick together, Slob and Fliss together. I might want to correct you on the Slob and Fliss because Fliss took victory corner wide and went through the grass, but he is catching back up to Slob's rear end. So Fliss could have had disaster. He almost bumped into the wall actually on that exit. If we can go back to the replay, if we have a second, I'd like to show you that if that's possible. Here we go. We'll bring this up right now. See if we found it. Yeah, Whoa. as you can see, Fliss just went wide, <laughs> wide through the gravel, and luckily was still able to recover and not lose control. Thankfully, these cars are more on the easier handling side on iRacing. He's a cool customer. If you can keep your head when everybody else is losing then theirs, then you don't have a real understanding of the situation. That's what I believe. Rachi and Shira E are racing back there in seventh and eighth. So we continue that two car, two car tandem back there. So sets of two all the way through. Go back one more. There's another set of two. Bike and Billy Bob Wright. There isn't a set of two between with Garcia and Nelson right now, but it's a set of three for Lindsey Post and Smith right now so um so right now it's just a bunch of cars running around post lindsay and ursa part of me and the one we're looking at this is the best one out there this is ursa in the barbie car up in front lindsay now trying to make the move on the orange fanatic machine in the popcorn position patrick post back there watching lindsay trying to make the move on the outside trying to pitch Ursum in. Ursum gives him room. He doesn't come across his nose. That will give Lindsay some momentum as they go beneath the underpass. Now working through the sweeping right-hander, heading down into seventh. This is a left-hander coming up. So Ursum takes that defensive line, covering the inside like wall-to-wall -wall carpet, leaving Lindsay nowhere to go. Now they work through the S's. Ursum doing a good job of racing some defensively. Look at the run that that Lindsay has now, but there's just nowhere to go as they come into corner number nine, the V corner, because you know why? It's shaped like a V. Urson puts it out a little bit wide. He's going to lose momentum. That's going to give it to Lindsay. Give the spot to Lindsay. And I think also jumping in there as well, it's going to be Patrick Post. Urson fights back, though. Post does not want to close the door. Let's Urson back in there. So that settles down a bit. Lindsay in 13th, Drew Urson in 14th, and Patrick Post watching the whole thing happen. And I think Lindsay too got a little lucky because he hit the brakes a little hard into that V corner, in fact, right behind Ursum. Or else I think it might have been Lindsay who was going to be in trouble if Ursum did not go into the grass there as we go up to back to six. Looking at that Fliss battle back there with Slob. Slob out in front. Fliss looking to see if he can get around him. These guys are 11 seconds back of fourth position, Catwig right now. There's that V corner again as they head in there. Now they come down. This is great. Corner number 10, which is a hairpin, which they have uh, coincidentally named the hairpin. 
I hope nobody got a lot of money there for marketing on that one. Now they come down the the main straight or down the uh, really the back straight of this one. Look for Fliss if he gets a little bit of a momentum. See if he can tuck in before they get into the 90 degree corner here. That is 11. Fliss just minding his biding his time right now. Being patient. They don't call him the slow bean machine for nothing. Of course, we talked about the California kid Eric Garcia's quest for the perfect Iron Man season went away. The man he was trying to duplicate is Patrick Fliss. The only man to race every lap of every race for an entire season. And it was a disappointing situation for Garcia, or disappointing luck, I should say, with that last race, too. Because he was running well and then had some trouble in, during parts of that race that cost him the chance for that. Got involved with an incident with uh, my booth partner for a long time, Richard Losper. That really wasn't the one that took him out, but kind of set the stage for him being a little bit off his game. Richard not here today. Still on the mend. Hope you're feeling better, Richard. I'd like to also wish him good luck uh, for his health, and hopefully he will be able to work his way back into the booth eventually, or soon, I should say. And let's go up back front, because right now it's still a two-car tandem with Numb and Swanky. They have just been pulling away now as Pegnan is back by four and a half seconds from these two. Yeah, Pajon has left uh, Catwig behind. That, that's no longer a two-car battle. Catwick not able to stay with the Italian driver. Let's go ahead and give you an interval here with 19 laps to go. We just crossed the halfway mark. It's four and a half seconds from Swinky back to Pajon. We'll see if uh, Marcello can do anything there to run down the front two guys. And of course, there's one more stop left. And based on the timing for that, the mo so the first pit stops for some cars were around lap 13-ish. So we might see this car starting to come in around the next three or four laps, lap 25, 26, up to about lap 30. So the pit window is slowly but surely closing in as these cars work their way through the course. Now remember, they all start with the same amount of fuel, whatever they can fit into their 34% size fuel tank. It's not like they start with light fuel and then they can come in and fill it up all the way. No, they're racing with just a small fuel cell, which means they have to wait for the cell to empty so they can come in and put in enough fuel. Let's go to the lead right now. Taking a defensive line is is uh, numb. Trying to look on the outside is Swanky. He can't get that done. And I heard there was some contact. Post got into the back of Lindsay. No harm, no foul, though, as they continue to race back there. That battle for that position is really good. We're going to stay on the leader, though, right now, because I think Travis Winky has decided that maybe now is the time to get a little taste of the lead. Yeah, Numb has led 21 laps in this one. The only other person to lead a lap has been Patrick Fliss today. So I think he wants to just get the lead and hopefully keep the lead with 18 laps to go because Swanky has been faster on the straightaways. Like I mentioned, though, Numb has been better in his corners and on exit. So if Swanky wants to make the move, he needs to get the draft, work to the back bumper, and immediately get under Numb and push him up to the outside line into a corner. Looking at this eighth place battle here, this is Ratchie. As they work their way, that's Shira Iwa now with a little bit of a lead. Ratchy behind him. Ratchy has to tuck back in. They go beneath the underpass. Again, talking fuel. Remember, since, since there are two stops, you don't necessarily... We don't know if the drivers actually filled it up all the way, although I would think with taking four tires... Uh-oh, Shira Iwa takes a shortcut. Is he going to get a slowdown penalty for that one? Boy, he used up a lot of the track. Yep, he sure did. The Japanese driver has been shown the black flag. He has to give up the position. And he's going to lose a lot of time trying to serve that black flag as simply as he can. And look how he loses the spots to Ratchy. That's going to really, really hurt right there because that's going to put him about a second behind Ramshi and counting. So... That's the mis that's the risk you have to you have happen though if you cut the course like that. Now we go to the slob battle. Another one of the dance teams that we've been looking at. Uh-oh, Marcella Pajon on the main straight. What happened? 
This is just coming out of the, the, the victory corner. The car got off on the grass and the Italian driver couldn't get it under control. Overcorrected. Ouch. Oh my goodness, that is just not good right there. We've seen a few drivers do that today, right. but not take the sharp left turn like he had. So let's see what the look, what he was doing in the cockpit here, because I'm curious to see. Because you can see he's turning as hard as he can, and it just slides into that wall. And that really, you really then, that helps you appreciate what Patrick Fliss did a few minutes ago, a few laps ago, when we saw him get off on the grass, and I was just able to gather his wits and keep it going straight. So there's the first real big name. He was running third, and actually, was really closing in on the leaders. It was four and a half seconds when we documented it. He had it down to 4.1 from the time he put it into the grass. That takes a little bit of the pressure off Numb and Schwenke now. Schwenke knows that he can now play around with Numb. He can battle with him, he can poke, he can prod. And he doesn't have to worry about letting another driver come to the party as it's a two car train, a two car battle up front. They have eight seconds lead now, eight and a half seconds. Back to Bob Van Katwick. Well, Pegnan, Pegnan is now out of the race, of course. He has officially put it behind the garage, into the garage area after that, too. So, Van Catwick has, right now, a very decent cushion for the third position. Eight seconds back of Swanky and another ten seconds back of Fliss. Pajan, pardon me. Yes, it's a Pajan. It's his Italian name there. Fortunately for you, now that you've learned to say it, you won't need to do it anymore, as he is out of the race. 17 laps to go in the grand finale, double points, double distance race here for the Hoysenfeld Engineering MX-5 World Tour. And one of the reasons they can confidently call it a world tour is the time slot that is chosen. In my opinion, the best time slot for any iRacing event. Saturday morning here in, in the United States on the West Coast, Saturday afternoon if you're in the East Coast, Saturday night if you're in Europe, late Saturday night for Eastern Europe, no work tomorrow, everybody can stay up late, the only guys that have to really struggle are the Japan and Australia drivers. And again, it's early Sunday morning for them, but heck, it's Sunday morning. Get up early, have a good Sunday. Talking about it now, let's look at this battle here between Fliss and Slob. Fliss, racing out of uh, Slovenia. Plus, of course, coming back from an injury as well, as we talked about in the pre-race, he was not sure if he'd be able to last the full race uh, after suffering a motorcycle accident, missing the past few weeks of action. Good to see him up in fourth position after such an injury. So congrats to him on how he's been running so far. Yeah, just to follow up on it, we can elaborate a little bit now that he's, that he's back. We tried to downplay it a little bit when we weren't sure how serious it was going to be. Uh, the word broken back is what we heard, and so that had us very worried. It's good to see that he is on the mend. Definitely good news, uh, because, of course, having a injured back is something to take yeah. very seriously. So, um... Ah, how about our leader deciding to come in, get that final stop out of the way? Errol Num has come in. So, Travis, you wanted the lead. You got it. Travis is an experience. I'm really surprised that Travis didn't follow Arrow in. What has to worry about here is, is Swanky's got to worry that that Arrow will come in and, and run some faster laps and he'll lose touch with them. I would be really, really surprised if Swanky doesn't come in this time around. I think so, but I think it was also trying to change the strategy up because... Swinky did that on the last pit stop, and Numb still stayed in front of him, even with with the pit stops and strategies they took. So, 
might be trying to change it up, but I think he might be going in. Numb, I think, also might have just taken two tires to change it up with a 20.5 second pit stop. Yeah, probably could afford to take two with the amount of fuel that needed to come in. Shit, sure, Iwa is in now. As is the Sheriff, Jody Fike. So our little dance teams have broken up. We'll keep an eye on that. Shira Ewa was dancing with Rasky. Fike was dancing with Billy Bob Wright. Now in is, uh, we see Fike pulling in. Ratchy staying out still. Schwenke just working the way through the V. Schwenke was two tenths of a second slower in qualifying. That's why I worry that that Dory can't stay out too long. And I, we got a bit of trouble as oh, it yeah. looks like Ursum got a bit loose and it looks like he will have to come in alone with Post. Got so let's check. Yeah, he got into the back of Post. And Post has actually made his stop. So Schwenke and Post both come in. GL stays out. Yeah, you me, can did I say Schwenke? I, I meant uh, Ursum and uh, Post come in. Yes, Ursum got loose into that corner, and he was going to probably come in anyway, but that was close to disaster for him. And sure enough, here comes uh, here come Travis Winky now coming in. Oh, oh, I don't know. I think that might count as cutting the pit entrance. That could well, cost him the win. Well, it all depends. Travis Winky is part of the series organization, organizer, so... They can always rethink the rule. Oh, Travis, I'm just teasing you. Oh, this is. Oh, I, I'm hearing from our director. This is this is an official iRacing rule. I thought I thought it was something that uh, that it was the series that organized. So there we go. With penalty, we'll be okay. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they're calling us cutting the course in general for that doing that in the pin entry. Patrick okay. Fliss followed them right in too. So some horrific luck for Swanky as Numb and Swanky come out <laughs> Numb just in front of Swanky. Swanky doing his best to hang on. Now they come into the to the left hander coming up and Swanky, poor guy's right back in the same position he was before. I think he might have had the right strategy. He just messed up that pin entrance and that could cost him the win. Well, with 14 laps, he'll get to play around there, try to poke and prod on the rolling Estonian, see if he can find a way around. Has everybody made their stops yet? No, we're still waiting for Catwig and Slob to come in. Then we'll sort out how things have played out and if people get matched up with their dance partners again. If you look at Catwig, our race leader, right behind him, Ursum and Post have found themselves again after they made their stops. Yep, so right now they're a lap down for the time being at least, but Catwick still running some consistent times. 213.693 was his last lap time. Yeah. But, of course, he's going to have to come in probably this time by. In fact, I would be surprised if he doesn't come in this time by, especially considering everyone else is pit. I think if he just takes fuel, he might be able to come out in front of Numb and Swanky. Who knows? Well, he's gone halfway. What he's hoping for is for Martians to attack Japan right now in the race to be called, and he would be the winner as he's going to stay out one more time. That might be a little risky, but we'll see. But right now he does have some traffic between him, Num, and Swanky. Slob stays out as well. He is racing in second position. Drivers in third are the, well, it's the guys that we thought. It's Numb and Schwenke. Now, how have the other guys paired out? I see that Fliss, well, of course, Boss Slob has not come in yet, so Fliss is out there running some times. Go back to sixth position. Billy Bob Wright has found Eric Garcia now. But they have lost the Sheriff. What happened to Jordy Fike? Jordy Fike, well off. Did Jordy have a bad stop? And Billy Bob Wright just went in the grass uh, this time around again and just got control in front of Garcia there. So that could have been close there. Pardon me there, Mr. Director. But Billy Bob Wright falls behind Eric Garcia there. Let's check out the replay real quick if we can. 
And let me just correct myself. The reason that Bike is gone is that uh, Wright and Garcia have yet to make their second stop. Look at Billy Bob in the X-Lax car. Whoa! Yep, Billy Bob Wright. Go. It looked like he almost was about to turn to the left, too, before or he got it straightened out there, so he got a little lucky there. Marcello Pouzon watching the broadcast right now after he exits says, I wish I could have done that when I got out on the grass. Catwick, our leader, coming down the downhill straight, heading in towards turn 11. I think this is about the time, I'm hoping this is the time at this point that he goes in. Unless he timed to found out a way to conserve fuel enough to stretch it to not needing a pit stop until very late on the run or just a one. He is still staying out. Stay out, get a little screen time from GSRC. Now just back behind him, we can go ahead, that's a driver, he's one lap down, that's Patrick Post. He's been able to distance himself now from Ursum, who's fallen off the pace a little bit. Those guys racing to be the lead car one lap down. The real battle, though, is the one we have to watch. It's Errol Numb in third spot right now, and Travis Swanky. And I feel like they're going to catch uh, catch Van Catwick eventually if Van Catwick doesn't find a way to to come in if he ever decides to come in. Waiting for the Martians, I'm telling you. Or Godzilla, who knows? Yeah. Well, it is Japan. It is. That's right. So what that means is, though, while Slob is out there racing all by himself, Fliss is out there racing by himself, it really becomes a case now. This will tell us who was faster and who was hanging on the coattails. We'll see if Fliss can put in faster times than Boss Slob. We'll see how that plays out. I'm wondering, too, now, uh, somebody mentioned this, too, and I th it is a really good point now thinking about that is Yelp Williams Williamson once again. And he mentioned that Bob Van Catwick, as well as as Boss Slob were behind the cars in front of them in the draft for much of the much of the last fuel run, so they might have a better fuel consumption as Ursum is loose in front of Slob. Luckily, he is out of the way there, but the fuel strategy, I think, is going to work out for both of them because of that draft when I think about it. And he might be right, because it is said that the draft does lead to less fuel consumption compared to if you're the yep. front lead cars. Start with the same amount of fuel, but you don't necessarily burn the same amount of fuel. Although Travis Swenke, who spent the entire race following Num around, it didn't seem to help him much as he came out right behind him. And again, though, with every second being precious, you, we just assume that they put in enough fuel. But with the competition so close, and again, I'm talking about Num and, and Swenke here, they could only afford to put in just enough fuel to get to the end. You don't want to stay in there. If you stay in there a second longer, a second and a half longer, to make sure you get enough fuel. Let's go to Swanky right now as he takes a peek on the inside of Num, but he just won't force the issue. There's still about 12 laps to go, 11 to go now, as uh, as they cross the line here, um, Van Van Catwick. But yeah, right now it's just you. It's about go time, just about yes, but. But right now, there's still a little time to try and work your way back to Van Catwick and Slop. And there you're looking at that battle for its fourth position with Swanky, a battle for third with Numb. It will be the battle for the lead as soon as these guys get out of the way, assuming they will get out of the way. Swanky just back behind, waiting plenty of time make it happen let's go ahead and look at the leader real quick on Catwick now just behind him the car directly behind him on the track that's Giancarlo Lenzi one lap down he'll get that lap down eventually when Ben Catwick comes in but here's the deal on Lenzi remember he was in that battle with post well he's got about a one and a half second lead on post and post now Ursum has had his issues Ursum is really out of the mix about 15 seconds back. So that three-car battle that was so fun to watch between Lindsay Post and uh, Ursum, that's gone away. Yeah, it's gone away uh, with mistakes and, of course, pit stops as well. 
So uh, right now it's just focus on your racing and like the broken clock says, focus on your marks, focus on your marks. You do not want to screw up and hit the corner of your car on the grass and spit out. There really is a race going on that is separated by half a lap and we're talking about Boss Slob is still racing Patrick Fliss right now, even though they're separated by a large distance on the track, Slob still has to make that stop. Yeah, he does, and and right now I think it still, even with the draft, the fuel can only go so long. Alright, now our leader has come in. So when he's coming in, we'll go ahead. It won't be long before Num goes by. Our leader just going beneath the underpass right now, working through 12, 13, and 14. I just don't expect Catwick to have anybody to race with. It would have been interesting seeing how he fared with Pajon, but since uh, the Italian driver put it in the wall, that's not an issue. There goes our leaders by right now. Numb and... Well, Boss and Slob so stayed out. Boss Slob is still in the lead, but Errol Numb is still coming up with a charge right behind him. Just Cat a six second difference. Catwig beginning to roll. He's going to come out well ahead of Patrick Fliss. So Catwig's going to take over third of all the cars who have pitted. Fourth on the track right now as Boss Slob continues to be Cinderella staying late at the ball. But that well, tank has got to be pretty dry. Well, if Van Catwick came in, I think the ball is about to strike midnight for Slob, uh, especially since the cars right behind him are closing in quick. About two temps every about 10-15 seconds on the track right now. Num is closing that up with Swanky fast. Slob about 27 seconds ahead of Patrick Fliss. That was his dance partner before Fliss decided to come on in. This could be the first laps that Boss Slav has ever led here in the MWT. Congratulations on that. Working his way down into the hairpin right now. Ten laps to go. And once he gets this pit stop made, we'll do our business here and run down our Eagle Nest Tavern back marker salute. As soon as Boss uh, brings the car down in. We'll stay on it a bit to see if he's able to get out in front of Patrick Fliss. I just don't think that's going to be able to get done. Fliss 27 seconds back. All right, Mr. Slob, bring it down this time, if you would. I have business to take care of. Nope. And he does not want to bring it in, so he does not want to do your business quite yet, as it's currently lap 32 coming along, coming in 9 to go this time by. No need to sigh right there quite yet. Uh... I think he's got to still come in. You have to think. Like, you, the fuel cell has to be as empty as a syrup bottle after a pancake social. I would think that this lap by is the time. So Errol Numb will just have to wait to get the lead back. Swanky waits in behind him. Boy, talk about patience from Travis. Some real patience, yeah, because he has had the straight, faster straightaway speed for just about the entire day. Has been turning faster lap times than um, in most of the race. In fact, his fastest lap time is four tenths faster right now for the overall race compared to Num. So I think it's, yeah, it is a good, I, good on him for being patient, I should say, because even though Schwenke has the faster car. He knows he needs to time it out right for a guy against against a guy like Num, who of course sealed that points championship already coming into this one with a 152 point lead. But I still think Swanky is just waiting for the right chance and the right time as we go back to about 10. Well, and if you get yourself inside the helmet of Travis, it's He's probably saying, where am I going to go if I get around him anyway? It's not like I'm going to drive away from the roll of the stone. He's just going to follow me around. So if I pass him, then he's going to have to pass me. That's just a couple more chances if we end up in the wall. There's going to be one pass attempt made, and it'll try to be by me, and I'll try to do it when I can get the win. So Travis back there just waiting for the right time. But I also think you don't want to wait 
have to wait too late into a race, but of course there is still a few more minutes before he's thinking, is it go time or is it wait until I have to go, go time? Yeah, as Boslav's bringing it in. We'll talk about where you would make that pass. I would think it would be between 10 and 11 would be his best slot to try, best chance to try to defend. All right, Slob is coming in. What we want to do now is pick up Patrick Fliss. As Slob comes in, these are the two guys who are together. Fliss is out there right now just working through, going beneath the underpass here. Working through those S's on his way now out onto the main straight. I think he's going to get him easily. Slob I, taking just enough. Slob smokes him up. Slob is rolling, but Fliss is by. And Fliss. by with a lot of distance. Yeah. 7.5 seconds ahead coming out of the pit. It's from Slob, I should say. Slob is yeah. 7.5 back, I should say. Fliss saying, see you later, boy, like he was a skater boy. As Boss Slob now drops down into fifth position. That'll... That'll be uh, probably where he's going to sort out. So that gives our lead now to Errol Numb. Puts them back out in front. Errol Numb and Travis Swinky. Bob Van Catwig all by himself in third position. And let's go ahead now. We can pay some bills. Let's go ahead and bring up that graphic. The Eagle Nest Tavern back marker salute. 60 seconds, and I think I can get it done in 60 seconds right now. We're going to start with the guy, last car out there. It is GL, Giancarlo Slenzi, Wall of Famer, racing at 15th position right now. My goodness, he's got 45 seconds to get up to Trip Smith. Not sure what happened to GL. Sorry we didn't catch that one. I'm sure GL not upset about that. Trip Smith racing in 14th position is familiar number 28 machine. Go up to the Barbie car, racing in 13th spot. He's got about 26 seconds to get up to Patrick Post, racing in 12th in the A872 machine. Benjamin Nelson in 11th position, about 11 seconds back of Billy Bob Wright. The only battle that has managed to find itself after the pit stops, the battle between Billy Bob Wright and Jordy Fike in ninth. And I believe Jordy was just able to make that pass, as a matter of fact, to get that done. So Wright, uh, Fike up to ninth. The California kid, Eric Garcia, racing up there in eighth. Base 8 Hammer all by himself in 7th. Jesuta Shiraiwa racing in 6th position. And Justin gets to call him Shooter for short. At least for the rest of Season 13. Okay, I think we are good from there because I think the stopwatch uh, stopped about 30 seconds ago. There you go. But some good runs from the back markers. That was brought to you by Eagle Nest Tavern. Stop in if you're up or up in Green Valley Lake for a hot meal and a cold drink. Well, here we go. Seven laps to go. And it's Errol Numb ahead of Travis Swinky. And with apologies to all the other drivers out there, our attention now is mostly going to be focused on these two. And then we'll keep an eye on Billy Bob Wright and Jordy Fike. Everybody else pretty much racing by themselves. Yep, right now, just uh, most of the field is just on their own, but of course the main action between these two, Swanky with the faster straightaway speed win with the draft available to him, Numb with the better corner exits and speed through the corners themselves. So it's going to be fun to watch these two compete for the final chance to get a win here in Season 13. The Roland Estonian picking up the championship. As Swanky now trying to peek in there, just feeling him out. The first time that Estonia has picked up a championship in the MWT. The only company, the only country with more than one champion is the United States, who has, of course, Richard Eklund has a pair of those. And our own Dr. Pitt's topology, Amjad Yaman, picked one up in a season where he was champion without winning a race. 
kind of, I'm just kind of proud about that. Kind of exemplifies the way he races. Very consistent. We ride on board with another American driver right now. From Ohio, Travis Swenke looking for a way around Errol Numb. Just kind of racing where he isn't right now with six laps to go. Other countries with wins. Portugal has one from Jao Freitas picked one up. And of course, Belgium with three from the great Jan Kumas. Australia with two from Sonny Ketchum. France from Evan Maillard, one of the great sim racers here on the iRacing service. I think Ahmed is comparing his championship to Danica Patrick winning here um, at the IndyCar. So, uh, <laughs> something a little bit like that, I guess. And then, just not to leave anybody out, of course, uh, Sam McAleer picked one up, the Scottish driver. Sam, the younger brother of Stephen McAleer, who races in the Continental Tire Series for real in the real world racing in an MX-5. All that as we continue to watch Errol Numb, the rolling Estonian. I don't know how hard Schwenke is trying. I think he's just looking to the left, looking to the right, trying to rattle the cage of the man whose cage cannot be rattled. That is Errol Numb. Well, Numb has six wins already on the season for a reason. So I think he just yep. has to focus again on hitting his brake markers and just not running we're having a bad situation. Now I'm a multiple time champion in uh, the absolute beginners Formula Eagle in the Skippy. We've talked about it. He seems to specialize in kind of the underpowered cars a little bit, but he says he'll race just about anything. It looks like he went in the grass a little bit there, but he still has the speed. In fact, he got a little bit faster, I think, than Swanky out on the exit, even with the grass. Num has put in enough races last season where he no longer qualifies as a rookie. He's so not in the run for Rookie of the Year right now. That battle continues. We're going to peek back in. Have we looked back in? Did we miss it? I was watching. Did we look in on Billy Bob Wright? Jordy Fike? Jordy Fike out in front of Wright right now. That battle continues as well. Wright tried to dive a little bit into the corner, but Fike shuts the door. You have to take that aggressive line sometimes. Names, uh, some people call it a dive bomb. Some others just say it's an aggressive move to try and make a pass you need to, and he's going to do it this time. There you go. Can he finish the job? And he does. Jordy fighting back those. They go beneath the underpass. In the shadows. They come out of the shadows. Oh, where are you going, Billy Bob? Once again, taking some interesting racing lines. That's going to give the momentum to Jordy Fike. He tries to find room on the outside. Wright moves over. Jordy now as they go Cialis bathtubs down the main straight, heading into one. This is a right-hander. The preferred position is going to go to Billy Bob. Jordy's going to have to try to pin him down. Wright takes that inside line, but look at now. Fike is going to have the momentum out of two. Again, the defensive line going from right now. It's going to force Fike to do it high. Right easing over. Fike tucks back in behind, and it looks like that has settled down a little bit of a hello from Jordy. That was close from being a bump and getting a car loose in front from <laughs> Fike. Well, there you have it. That's good lesson learned there. Maybe that's something we're going to see from Numb and Swanky when the time comes. I think if I'm Swanky, what I try to do, I try to get a great run out of 9, chase him down into the hairpin, get a great run out of 10, and then make the pass between 10 and 11 going into the 90 degree. That way I can defend through 12, 13, and 14 and only have to worry about Numb trying to snake me between the final corner and the start finish line, which comes pretty quick here. Yeah, I think that's the best way to take it too if you're swanky because that is probably the best way to set it up, especially 
into Victory Corner. That's probably why they call it Victory Corner, since one, it's the last turn, and two, it sets things up for that kind of pass. So let's go ahead and watch these guys work a lap. Now, now they come in here. This is, this is corner five. This leads to go. We talk about the underpass, but obviously there's two of them here with this oval. You go under once and you go under it twice. So there's the first one. Now this sets you up onto the back part, the sweeping right-hander. This is probably you could make a look here too. It's Swecky now trying to peek in. What Travis doesn't want to do is make a mistake and lose contact with Numb. Now they work through the S-curves. This is seven and eight. Now they get up to the part, if you were going to make a pass, this is where I think you have to start thinking about setting up. Make sure you get a good run through nine. Be close enough that you have a good run into the hairpin. This is the right-hander coming up. Swanky right up behind him. You want to get a good line through here. Swanky takes that late entry, gets a tight exit off. Then, look, he's only about a car length back. This is a pretty long straight. If he can get a good run, get up in the toe, dive down in here and force the issue into 11. I don't expect him to do it this time because it would be pointless to do it early. But look at the run he gets, and he's tucking in. He's just feeling it now. He's not going to force the issue, are you? I think he is, Soup. Don't tell me how to race. I know when it's time to go. He fights into 11. They go beneath the underpass, but he's not able to close the deal. They work through 12, 13, and 14. Now they come back out onto the main straight. This is where I don't think there's enough time before you get to the start-finish line, which comes right there. I think if Swanky forces Numb a little bit wide, he might be able to do it, but yeah, you might be right there. The bad news for Numb, the good news for Swanky is the championship is decided. They're racing just for pride out there, just for fun, and Swanky would sure like to pick up this win. He's got to say, Arrow, you've had six already. You don't need another one. And honestly, with a 19-second lead, these guys could get together. As long as they don't put each other in the wall, they could get it straightened out and, and uh, head down and, and still keep their position. Travis, I, I'm, not, I'm not giving you permission, but I'm saying the commentators will be kind if you decide to rough up the Rolling Estonian a little bit. Well, we've seen a similar situation just with one car, not with two, uh, in the HPP simulation in uh, Sports Car Champion, Sports Car Challenge, pardon me, last night, where the GTA leader got loose and and spun out just about uh, through De through Degner or uh, at the track we we're at at Suzuka, pardon me, and he still was able to to end up winning by six seconds for the GTE class. So we have seen something like that happen recently in different series. So you are right. It still could be something like that could happen. All right, here we go again. They work their way through the hairpin. They'll have a couple more bites of the apple. This time he's not as close as he was last time. Let's call that two car lengths back. I don't know if Schwenke's going to get there. The closing speed doesn't seem to happen till the very end. And not even going to make a run out of this time. Just didn't have it set up. But maybe that's what Travis is thinking. That I can't guarantee that I'm going to have the opportunity. Maybe Swanky says, if I get that chance, I better take it when I have it. Working through the S's now. Well, I'm going to call it the S's. It's 12, 13, and 14. This little left, right, left, um, or right, left, right combination. Now they come down the main straight. No challenge being done right now. It'll be two to go. Two to go. I think this is when you start saying it's time to go and make a pass now. He has tried it, Swanky, a few times, but I think he's going to try even more aggressively starting with this two to go mark because there's not a lot of time left to even consider anything else. Yeah, I think maybe now he's, if the opportunity presents itself, he's got to he's going to have to take it. And maybe if opportunity doesn't knock, he may have to chase it down the sidewalk and tackle it because. He might have to make his own opportunity right now. Swecky, I don't think you're going to see a mistake from Num. I can report that that right fight battle has cooled off a little bit, although Jordy be able to run him back down. We'll check back in on that on the last lap. We should have plenty of time as they are almost a minute and a half behind the leaders. Should be able to catch that last battle. We're going to stay focused on the front right now. This is Travis. He gets a pretty good run out of that sweeping right-hander. Now they come into the 7-8 combo. 
Okay, I hit the brakes a little too hard heading to that 7-8 combo, in fact. So I think that's why I lost a little time entering the corner. Now into this V corner. This is the sharp left-hander. We'll see what kind of run off here. But what I saw Travis get a good run is he took that late entry. Numb kind of had to do a little bit of defensive because he thought he might take in there. Travis took a real late entry into this hairpin and got a good drive off. This one feels pretty good. He's about one and a half car lengths back. Oh, I don't know if he's going to have to get there. The toe may come too late. The car just will not close up fast enough. Let's see if Schwinky decides to dive it down in. He's coming in. He's peeking. Nope, not going to force the issue. He breaks. He'll have one more chance at that corner through 12, 13, and 14 now. You can see he's close with that toe, just less than two tenths of a second off the back bumper. We're up to about half a second, but I think this is going to be a wild final lap, Bill. The problem is the Roland Estonian has ice water in his veins. He just not he just will not make a mistake. He will not open the door for Errol Numb. I'm sorry for 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 Travis Swinky Numb playing being perfect right now. I heard a little contact back there. Might have been a car. We're not going to check on it. We'll follow up later. Giancarlo Lenzi gave us give a sorry, so it must have involved him. Right now, we'll stay focused on our leaders. They go through the three four combination. A passing zone is five. If you can get a good run out of four, there's you can attack down into five. This is a right hander coming up. He's about one car length back. You can force the braking issue here. He has a pretty good run. Is he going to force it? No. He is so polite. That's how his mom and dad raised him in Ohio. They go beneath the underpass for the final time, that one at least, the sweeping right-hander. He is really close. Can you get a run going into the seven? Seven will be a left-hander. Taking the defensive line is the Roland Estonian. Numb gets, or Travis gets to the outside now. He should have a pretty good run through here. A defensive line from Numb, that was interesting. Now they come in to corner number nine. This is the V corner, the one that I think is important. The one that he's got to go, oh, Travis takes a tight entry in there. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but he gets a pretty good drive out of it. Now they're on the throttle, the skinny pedal, all the way down to the floor as they head to the hairpin. Travis has got to get a good bite out of 10. He's not going to get there in time. Swanky takes a tight intro and entrance in there. Oh, this is only a half car late back. This is the closest he's been. It's one car like that. He is right in the toe right now. Can he get there? He's gaining. He's gaining. It's now a half a car length. He's coming. He's got to force the issue this time. He ducks to the inside. Made a show to his nose a little bit early. He's to the back bumper. Force the issue, Travis. Dive it in there. He keeps numb to the outside. Now he's got to get a bite. They go underneath. It's hard to tell where they are. They come out. And it's now has the position. Travis is all over him trying to find a way around. I think now it is too little, too late. The double points, double distance, grand finale, season 13 race goes to Aero Numb, second place to Travis Swinky. Woohoo! Let's go back and check on Billy Bob Wright. That's the only battle left on the track right now. Wright has quite a distance, about a second ahead of Jordy Fike. I don't think the sheriff is going to think anything with him. That Catwick comes across in third spot. Patrick Fuss is going to go weaving back and forth as he comes across from fourth as well. Boss a great run for fifth. He's got to be happy about that. Nice to see Patrick Abel feeling good enough to finish it up. Billy Bob Wright in ninth is not going to have a challenge from Jordy Fike. That one looks like it's going to be easy. Yasuda Shiraiwa coming home in sixth. Tom Rapshi coming right on behind him. He's going to come in in seventh. The California kid, perfect. 12 out of 13 races. I'm sorry, 11 out of 12 races. But he needed to have them all. He's going to miss that perfect Ironman by one mistake cost him. Billy Bob Wright is going to get ninth. Jordy Fike gets 10th, and the last car on the lead lap, the Alabama driver, Benjamin Nelson. Okay, that will conclude the racing here at the uh, 
at Motegi, but the Global Sim Racing Channel will take a short break. We'll be back to run down the entire finishing order, talk to some drivers, and close up shop. Back in a few. Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Hoysenfeld Engineering MX-5 World Tour. It's the grand finale, double points, double distance from the road course at Motegi. Season 13 is complete. We know our race winner for today. We know our champion for the season. Let's go ahead and run down your finishing order of the final event. It was the Roland Estonian, basically wire to wire. The only time he didn't lead was during the pit window. Errol Nunn picks up his seventh victory of the season. That's pretty impressive. Travis Swanky did everything he could to find his way around Nunn, but for the second race in a row, he was denied and will have to settle for the runner-up spot. Newcomer Bob Van Catwick, an impressive performance for him. Welcome to the series and welcome to a podium, Van Catwick. Patrick Fliss, also welcome back after an injury, going to pick up fourth position. Glad to see that he can complete the entire 90 minutes. Boss Slob rounds out your top five. Yasuda Shiraiwa gets sixth position with the Bay State Hammer, Tom Ratchie in seventh. The California Kid, Eric Garcia, completes all the laps and finishes in eighth position. Billy Bob Wright was able to best Jordy Fike to pick up ninth, just ahead of Fike, who is in tenth. Okay, Justin? And to round off the lead lap cars was Benjamin Nelson for today. He finished about 101 minute 49 seconds back of the main cars. Patrick Post was the first car a lap down, followed by Jerome Ursum uh, and Trip Smith. Juan Carlos Lenzi had a few struggles on the last laps as he finished off 15th place. Meanwhile, Marcel P Pegnan. Uh, Pajon, pardon me, finished 18 laps down after his situation where he hit the wall coming out of Victory Corner. Joe McDonald finishes the race 40 laps down, while Dries Nice and David Hampson never made the starting grid. And now let's go ahead and take this opportunity 
to do two things at one time. We're going to talk to our race winner and our season 13 champion. And of course, I'm talking about the Roland Estonian, Arrow Num. Arrow, congratulations on the win and the championship. Uh, how does the MWT, it's uh, 158 races, 112 broadcast on GSRC. This is a nice feather in your cap. Yeah, it's it was fun and very good season for me. But yeah, I was lucky and maybe yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, luck is part of racing. Um, let's talk about the race today. Boy, Travis did everything he could to try to get around you, but uh, there's just no way. He just had the momentum. He, he couldn't get the past him. Yeah, in the key corners, I had a good run out and uh, I was able to defend. It, and at the end there on the outside, so it was pretty easy, but he tried to scare me a few corners there at the end. <laughs> well, congratulations on a great series, a good performance here today. And now we will, even though this is the last one here for the uh, MX-5 World Tour, we'll be watching you over there in the Absolute Beginner Series in those skippies. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Errol Numb, your winner today and your champion. Congratulations to him. Let's go ahead and talk to our second place finisher now. That would be Travis Swanky. Welcome to the booth, Travis Swanky, who is now coming in after finishing second in today's race. How did you feel about how you performed today competing with our champion for the season for the win from the start? Uh, just a great race and hats off to Hero there for putting in the championship run. You know, that was, uh, I mean, I gave it everything I had to try to get by him and get my, my first ever win this series, but it's uh, just, just that hard. Yeah, because it looks like looked like you were going with an aggressive line multiple times in that, especially down the final stretches. You poked your nose underneath of Numb a few times. What was the difference, in your opinion, between what your car had and what Numb had, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I think it was really actually like the fourth lap after when the tires started falling off, like that fourth, fifth, sixth lap. I think I was just a little stronger on the tires when they wore right then, but after that, it was advantage gone. So then it was uh, really just using the draft. There was nothing else to really do. It was pretty even everywhere. Uh, the one spot I think I had an advantage on them going up the hill through those S's, it, it, there's, it's just a, a terrain. You can't do anything with it. You can, you can try to get a little run, but there's just not enough straight after it to, to actually get inside. Travis, it's soup here. I tried to give you permission on the broadcast to rough them up a bit. I know you have great pride in your in your reputation as a clean driver. Did you give any thought at all to getting a little aggressive and maybe give him an elbow? Well, that's pretty funny. So I, I think, you know, that's really a frozen bird. That's like a you know a butterball frozen bird, not a bush fink, because he's just he was just ice. I tried everything, and <laughs> like I think the only thing left is to is to hit him. I just got to punt him. Right. That's the only way I'm gonna make it now. Well, man, it was a nice show, and that's two races in a row you couldn't get around them, but they had the same problem with Phillip Island. Maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next time. It was a great race with them and a great championship, and thanks to all the sponsors and uh, GSRC and Hoisenfeld. Thanks a lot. Travis Swanky, one of the series organizers and our second-place finisher here today. Let's go ahead. I'm going to talk to our newcomer here. I can't wait to do this. I thought I saw Bob up there. Is he not available? I thought I saw Van Kaplan. I guess he's not there after all. Let's go ahead. We talked to him early on. Let's go ahead. Well, do we want Boss Slob? Let's go ahead and talk to Boss. We'll bring Boss down in here if he went into the wrong booth. Boss Slob, congratulations. Fifth place here today. You were running up there, had some good battles, and uh, top five is always nice. Yeah, for sure. I think it was my best results for the whole season, so it's always nice. Kind of hard passing. A fun, race to, a fun track to race on, though, don't you think? Yeah, it's uh, the draft is uh, really effective here, so uh, I was able to hang in uh, with some guys that are normally faster than me, so it was fun. And yeah, I had a, lo a couple of uh, close uh, overtakes because the guy in front made a little mistake, but yeah, it was good fun. What was your pit stop strategy like? Was it four tires the first time and then none, or how did that play out for you? Yeah, I took four tires. The first uh, stop was... Uh, yeah, they can just about do it while refueling. And then the second stop, I took uh, only the left side. Yeah, you were out there for a long time on that second stop. We, we we thought you'd had to come in for one more. Hey, well, congratulations on the top five today. And we hope to see you back for season, uh, season 14 when it starts up here in the fall. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Boss Slav, a top five finisher today. 
And we were hoping maybe that we could talk to a series organizer, but it looks like Jeroen's not here. So let's close up shop here, our last one. We'll give a quick shout out to Patrick Fliss. We talked to him beginning of the uh, beginning of the broadcast. Patrick, you made it. Yeah, just barely. <laughs> it was starting to hurt a bit at the end, but uh, I was too close to stop. <laughs> too close to stop. You know, you're in a nice little battle there. Can you tell us about the pit stop strategy? Did you take four tires when you came in the first time? No, I just took two. I thought uh, it would work out. Um, we lost the front pack at the beginning, yeah. so I thought maybe I would uh, gain some time by taking two left and then on the second stop, two right. But um, yeah, it didn't work because the fueling took long enough to take all tires. So uh, it, it didn't make a difference. Well, look, we're going to be off. This is the last race of the season. We're going to be off for a little while, but we're planning to come back is what I hear. Negotiations are underway. We plan to be back on GSRC in the fall. That'll give you a couple more months to heal up. Can't, can't wait for you to make a run at it for real coming up next season. Yeah, I can't wait for another season. Good to have you back. You, you, great way to close the season is to be able to talk to you. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Just like to think uh, Blue Flag Racing as well. Yeah, I don't think you should be allowed to race on blue flag racing. You, I don't think. Have you ever been shown the blue flag in your life? <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. It's uh, blue flag racing because we're racing among the guys who have the blue flag on. I, okay, I got it. He, yep, uh, thank you very much for your time, Patrick, by the way. And hopefully you have some more time to recover. Hopefully your back feels better for after uh, you rest up after today's race as well. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. All right. All right, Justin, that's going to wrap it up for us here. So we, there we get Patrick out of here. Well, for the final time now, let's close up shop. And we'd like to, first of all, give our thanks to the people that make this possible. And, of course, we're going to start off by thanking uh, everyone at the Quality Racing Syndicate for organizing this series of contracting with GSRC to broadcast it. Thanks to Hoisingfeld Engineering, affordable simulating software and hardware was thought to be of limited use for race teams and drivers, but their simulation solutions bring professional results within reach of any race team or driver without having to compromise on realism or engineering value. They offer a broad array of products and services such as advanced vehicle simulation and hardware. They also are able to simulate any combination of race car and track, including a full-fledged cockpit environment with unparalleled realism. Heisingfeld Engineering Solutions are currently being used by professional teams and drivers in Formula 4, GP3, GP2, and Formula 1. Now, these products are available for any professional team or driver looking for the edge in racing. Be a better race car driver and get in touch today. Thanks to Six Sideways, a full-service motorsports company based in Sebring, Florida, which currently competes in the SCCA Pro Racing Battery Tender Mazda MX-5 Cup Championship. Six Sideways offers race car build preparations, rentals, transportation, maintenance, trackside support, juggling lessons, setup services, driver coaching, marketing and media services, race car storage, and more. Contact them with your motorsports needs at SixSideways.com. Justin? And thanks to the company's equipment and software that you see on your screen now that we use for our broadcast. We would also give a, like to give a special thanks to Eric Elcombe and Casey Lalonde for the official music used by GSRC. See the screen for how to contact each of them. With Season 13 of Heisenfeld Engineering MX-5 World Tour in the books, negotiations are underway between the Quality Racing Syndicate, Syndicate and who organized the tour in the GSRC. We expect to be back here in a few months to bring you Season 14. And for more information about that and other things concerning the GSRC, your best bet is GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We are also on Twitter at GSR Channel and Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel. And finally, on behalf of the man whose voice you just heard, Justin Prince, our director, Amjad, oh, I'm sorry, Dougie, uh, <laughs> let's try this right, it's Joe Peak, and our camera artist, Dougie Beard, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. A special shout out to Richard Loss for Feel Better Soon. With that said, for the final time this season, we're going to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, which will be around August or September, We'll see you on the track. Race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.